Hello? Yeah, yeah, this is Ratty. No, no, we can't come all the way over to your house to count if I'm saving gasoline. I'll tell you what you do. You walk over here and visit with us a while, and then later I'll drive you home. <laughs> Goodbye now. The Life of Riley. A half hour with radio's newest and friendliest family, and starring William Bendix as Riley. Friends, we're happy to have with us tonight as we meet the Riley family and hope that listening to their problems may help you to forget some of your own. One problem that the Riley family have solved, in common with millions of other American families, is how to best serve in the national war effort. Every week, the Rileys buy war bonds, and they're going to keep on buying war bonds and more war bonds until Johnny comes marching home. Well, the Rileys are on the move again. Or rather, they will be as soon as they can find another place to live. The apartment they've been renting in Los Angeles must be vacated by the end of the week. And while breadwinning father has been hard at work in his defense job, mom has been out house hunting all day, unsuccessfully. It's six o'clock and just about time for dinner. Oh, Junior, I wish you wouldn't do your homework on the dining room table. Did you have homework when you were a little girl? Of course. I bet your teacher didn't pile on the way mine does. Mm. Seems like all I ever did was homework. Were you good at arithmetic? Oh, pretty good. Then how much would it cost to ship a carload of soft coal 900 miles if the freight rate is 15 cents a cubic yard less 2% for cash? Uh, Junior, your hands clean. Your father will be home any minute now. <laughs> I'm sure they're clean. But what's the answer, Mom? Now, Sonny, homework's your problem. Having dinner ready when your father comes home is my problem. You notice that my problem's been solved. That's because you haven't got my teacher. If one fork was out of place, she'd make you set the table a hundred times. Oh, Mom, I'm sick of school. Can I quit, huh, Ma? What? Quit school at 11 years of age? I wish they'd draft me. <laughs> now hurry and get your books off the table. Your pop's coming now. Oh, Sure was hot in the plant today. Well, this stove I've got here isn't any cooling system. Hello, Ma. How's about them kids? I don't mind, Riley. Yeah. Now you don't have to pin up Charlie Boyer's picture on the wall. Oh. Hiya, Pop. Hello, Junior. Go wash your hands. Oh. <laughs> how can any boy's hands get so black doing homework? I was trying to figure out how much it'd cost to ship a carload of soft coal. Oh, no wonder your hands are so black. <laughs> Next time, try the same lesson with soap. Oh. All right. Riley, uh, what do you got in that long package? This? Oh, this is a surprise. Is it for me, Pop? A baseball bat, huh? To me, baseball is a gruesome subject. The Dodgers lost today. <laughs> well, what is it, huh, Pop? This package contains what is probably one of the most great ideas your old man ever had, and that's saying plenty. Well, thank goodness they haven't rationed conceit, or you'd be speechless. I give you facts, and you call it conceit. A prophet is without profit in his own home. And it's even worse when he's renting. <laughs> Junior, I'll show you what's in the package later. Oh, you look tired, Riley. How did things go today? Well, I had a very tough... Well, that's fine. I had an awful day. <laughs> I went from real estate agency to real estate agency. There's just no place to live in the whole state. Now, don't you worry, Mom. We ain't going to be homeless. What? Did you get wind of an empty flat? We are going to live in style. Where, Pop? Uh, I'll tell you all about it after grub. Dinner. <laughs> Riley, the last time you had that look in your eyes was in St. Louis. We ended up living in a trailer right behind a brewery. <laughs> well, uh, of course, maybe the view wasn't so good, but the air was intoxicating. <laughs> Riley, what have you got up your sleeve? I am not at liberty to divulge details until after we grew up at uh, 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 dinner. Well, I'm not in the mood to coax you. Dinner's ready, so wash up. Where's Ellie? Eloise won't be home to dinner. 
She's rehearsing with that corny dramatic class. Oh, I suppose it's going to be late again. A girl of 16 has got no right being out here after dark alone. Your daughter's not alone. She's with that nice boy who lives down the street. Oh, that nice boy. I've talked with that boy. I'd rather she was alone. <laughs> Some boy. Twenty years old and smoked. Why, Pop, I heard you say you smoke when you're twelve. Yes, but I didn't inhale. I mean I mean I I did not smoke. Well, maybe once, but my old man gave me a good licking, and I deserved it. And that's what you'll get if I catch you smoking. Don't worry, Pop, you won't catch me. That's fine. <laughs> well, what's about dinner? What's holding it up? You, Riley. At least when you're making a speech on the evil of smoking, take the cigar out of your mouth. As soon as you wash your hands, you can sit down. My hands are clean, but I'll wash them just to set you an example. Boy, we're sure turning out flames now. We rolled all six today. You know, I never seen the bus so crowded like it was tonight. Hmm. What'd you say, Riley? I said the bus was certainly crowded tonight. Two old ladies had to stand up all the way home. (laughs) Why didn't you get up and give them your seat? Well, there was only one seat and two ladies. I didn't want to create any ill feeling between them. Junior, in spite of what your father says, you should always give your seat to a lady. Okay. But if she's a whack, she's got to race me for it. I'm so hungry, my stomach thinks there's a bottleneck in my throat. What's on the bill of fare, Mom? Not that it matters. I love anything you pick. Oh, that's fine. Except veal, though. Well, that's what we're having in a salad. But we had veal last night. I know, but there was so much left, I thought we'd have it again tonight. Hey, Pop, tell a guy, what's in that package? Never mind, Junior. It'll keep like the veal. (laughs) Pass that stuff, will you? Oh, stop growling. Working in an airplane plant's no harder than trying to feed this house. I only get so many ration points, you know. Hey, Pop, did they transfer to the Lennon Gear Department like you said they would? Nope. The guys that are running that plant finally gave the bombsite division a new lease on life. They put me in. <laughs> no kidding, Pop. Bombsite. Gosh, where do I tell a gang? Bombsite. Isn't that lovely? Just between us, they've got a new site that's a beaut. From 30,000 feet, they can part Mussolini's hair with a bomb. <laughs> so I gave it a nickname. It's a blockhead buster. <laughs> Hey, I just found some veal in this. What'd you do, run short of cereal? <laughs> hey, Junior, pass me another slab of that veal loaf, will you? Here you are, Pop. Mm-hmm. Thought you didn't like veal. Well, I, I don't, but if I eat it all tonight, it won't be here tomorrow. Well, Mom, I can see you're just dying to know what's in that package, ain't you? You know I am, but I'm not going to ask you. Well, now here's what I've been thinking. Ever since we left Brooklyn, we've been moving from one place to another. I, I mean, a family shouldn't get kicked around like as if they was a football. Hey, Pop, each of the fellows at school has ten tickets to sell for tomorrow's game. Junior, I'm buying no football tickets. You can put that in your pipe and smoke it. And don't let me catch you smoking. <laughs> football tickets. Our money's going to be used for a better purpose. Riley, will you please get to the point? Well, in view of since we've got to move out of here Saturday... If you buy these tickets, Pop, you'll be sitting right on the 50-yard line. No, uh, that's all I need is to get whitewash on my good pants. <laughs> Mom, I'm, I'm sick of paying rent. I'd rather have one room of our own and then ten that belong to a landlord. As the poet once said, Breathe there a man with soul so dead who never to himself has said, This is my home, my native house. You know what that's from, Junior. Yeah, Pop. It's from hunger. <laughs> well, like that, could certainly right. Riley, what is in the package? Plans. Plans for our new house. Our new house? Our home. You want to build a new house? Well, certainly you can't build an old one. <laughs> Gee, a new house. Can I have a ping-pong table in my bedroom? No. I got enough trouble falling asleep now without counting ping-pong balls jumping over a net. <laughs> Riley, a, a house is an awfully big undertaking. How much do the plans cost? Nothing. With the way prices have gone up, that's pretty reasonable. <laughs> One of the boys in the drafting department used to be an architect. He gave them to me. Here, here, let me show you. Oh, but, Riley, I just remembered. The government won't allow building till the war's over. They'll give you a priority if you're a defense worker, and you are looking at a man who falls right into that category. <laughs> now, you see, the way I figure it, we get a builder who works fast. We live in a hotel until the house is finished. Well, 
It's all very exciting, but I, I don't know. Well, ain't these plans neat? This fellow built some of the finest homes in Los Angeles. He built the city hall, and it's beautiful. City hall? I've never seen it. Oh. Well, he built the city jail. Your uncle has seen that. <laughs> now, don't start picking on Uncle Baxter. Well, I don't want that leech to know we're planning a house. Maybe he'll decide to go back east before we move in. Why, you ought to be ashamed. You never heard me plot against your uncle. My uncle being dead causes us very little trouble. <laughs> hey, Pop, show me where the banister is. Banister? Oh, uh, well, here, see? This is the staircase leading to the second floor. And from this window, you can practically see Catalina. Catalina? What are you thinking of building? Well, on that lot we own down at the beach. I guess I was a pretty smart guy to snap up that property just before the city condemned it. <laughs> Riley, you know you can't build on condemned land. But I saw in the paper that the land's been okayed again. You know, uncondemned. It's all politics anyway. Here, look at this living room. The fireplace is over here. And it's a real fireplace. Oh, boy, with the roast weenies. Sure, I'm going to build a grill in it. Then Mr. and Mrs. Riley and their son and daughter will have a barbecue. If we can get steaks. <laughs> well, what about Uncle Baxter? Well, we could barbecue him, but I like steak better. Uh, Riley, how much will this house cost? But the house can cost a fortune or very little if you know the right angles and get good discounts. How much will it cost? Huh? Uh, $6,000. $6,000? Hi, Uncle Baxter. Hello, Junior. Did I hear someone say $6,000? I must be in the wrong house. Yeah, and you've been in the wrong house for the last two years. <laughs> Riley, that is a fine innuendo to make about your own flesh and blood. You're not my flesh and blood. Did I not give you a transfusion two years ago that saved your life? Ingratitude is the besetting sin of mankind. Well, maybe you did give me a pint of blood once. But last week I gave a pint of the Red Cross. I do not see the connection. I gave him the pint you gave me. <laughs> So now you're a big man with the Red Cross, and I don't owe you nothing. My dear nephew, I never implied that you did. But since my presence here is apparently resented by the head of the house, I shall leave. In a month or so. Uncle Baxter, you can stay as long as you like. No. Of course, if it'll make you feel better, you can pay us a little for your board. Mm. When you're able to. Well, that is my fondest intention. And I expect to make a desirable connection any day now. Why, well, I turned down the position of doorman today at Grauman's Chinese. Why? I couldn't see the screen from the sidewalk. <laughs> All you do is turn down jobs and come back here to eat and sleep. Are you insinuating that I don't bathe? <laughs> what? These plans are no good. I don't see any cellar. Oh, uh, don't you worry, son. There'll be a cellar when the house is finished. We can't disappoint the mice. Uh-huh. Somebody's building a house. And somebody's not going to live in it. Oh, please, Riley. Oh, all right. Now, look. Right here is the dining room. Ten by eight. Very nice size, not too big. That's right. You keep the dining room small. Makes the portions look bigger. <laughs> This door leads to the kitchen. Now, take it easy before we go any farther. We? What do you mean, we? Uh, what do you figure it's going to cost us to build this house? Huh? Us? Pop says $6,000. Well, if your pop says six, it'll run ten. But I'll keep it down to eight. Now, you listen here. Eight? Why, we can't afford to spend anything like that. Now, after all, Riley, we've got nothing in the bank, and we don't know if your job's secure yet. Oh, I, I admit I, I've only been at the plant for three months, but, but I can stay there for life. Didn't they switch me to a new department today? Well, maybe we should wait about the house. Till you've been on the job another few months. Yeah, just like a woman. Well, I don't want to seem conceited, but I might be a partner in that plant one of these days. <laughs> Very amusing, Riley. Douglas Aircraft taking you in as a partner. <laughs> uh, is that so? Well, yesterday, Mr. Douglas passed by my bench, and I heard him say very clearly to his assistant, if that fella keeps working that way, we've got to give him the business. <laughs> So oh, let's have no more talk about me losing my job. I've decided to build, and that's that. Well, Riley is right. Absolutely right. Do me a favor, Mr. Blood Donor. Stay off my side. Now, here's the back door, Mom, for delivery. 
None of the stores deliver anymore. Uh, say, Riley, tell me, who's going to do the building? Oh, yes, Riley. You want someone who's very reliable. I got a list of several builders, and I'll decide later on. Now in the kitchen... Operator, give me Crestview 65095. Can't you phone some other time? Riley, be serene. Count your blessings. <laughs> Hello, Jasper. Back to Turnbull. You very busy tonight? Or breaking in a new pipe, huh? Well, listen, I got some news for you. You're building a house for my nephew by marriage, Riley. Uncle Baxter, who's on that phone? Hold on, Jasper. I'm talking to Jasper Wrangle. He's the best builder in the city. My bosom friend. No friend of yours is going to build my house. Now, Riley, don't cut off your nose to spite me. Not that it isn't a splendid idea. Um, <laughs> this man's an expert. I don't want to discuss it any further. It's all settled. Fine. Hello, Jasper. It's all settled. Come over right away. I'll meet you downstairs. <laughs> While the Rileys are waiting for the arrival of Uncle Baxter's friend, Mr. Wrangle, here is a message from the Office of War Information. Next winter will be one of the most critical periods of the war for millions of civilians unless they take steps now to prepare their homes for the cold weather. Here are three things that can be done now to help ward off sickness and epidemics next year. One, insulate homes. Two, place orders for coal immediately. Three, check up on all heating equipment to ensure peak efficiency. This is a campaign born of wartime necessity. Because it is vital to winning the war, the government is helping to increase the flow of fuel to shortage areas. But there can be no assurance that conditions will be any less severe than last year unless everyone cooperates during the spring and summer. Well, it's an hour since Uncle Baxter has gone downstairs to meet his friend, the builder. Meanwhile, the Rileys are huddled around the blueprints of their dream home. Eloise, the daughter, having come home, has been told the big news. Right here is the mailbox. See? Hey, Pop, can I have a step at mailbox just for myself? You cannot. If Superman can't write you in care of our mailbox, let him phone. <laughs> well, what do you think of the layout, Ellie? Oh, Daddy, I think it's just wonderful. At last, I'm going to have a room all to myself. No more day bed in the dining room. <laughs> oh, Riley, it, it's grand you're wanting to do all this for the children and me, but well, one thing worries me. But what's that, Dumplin'? The cost. Now, you say $6,000, but you know you're up to get big ideas. Oh, no, 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 not me. Now, 6000 is top. We can borrow it from the bank. We'll pay it off like we pay our rent. Only we'll pay it regularly. <laughs> Pop, we'll raise rabbits, huh, Pop? The rabbits will take care of that. <laughs> oh, don't interrupt, Daddy Junior. You ought to be in bed anyway. Look who's telling me to go to bed. Oh, what are you, grown up or something? Now, Junior, don't be so fresh. And Eloise, don't boss him around. Quiet. You kids can't stop scrapping or tear up these plans and call the whole thing off. We're sorry, Daddy. They got a couple of boys down at the plant who know the building game from A to B. They figured every foot of lumber, every hunk of plaster, every nail, the house comes to exactly $5,920, which leaves us $80 for any, uh, incident. Mm, like furniture. Yeah. <laughs> now all we need is a name for the place Let's see, now uh, uh, How do you like uh, Sea View Grotto? Daddy, Grotto's more for a restaurant oh. Well, uh, then how's the uh, The Riley Domicile That's very poetic <laughs> Oh, well, here comes Uncle Baxter across the street With a man Is he handcuffed to the man? <laughs> <laughs> no, it must be the builder Now don't let him talk you into spending any more than we plan on. Ha, ha, talk me into it. What do I look like, a boob? Don't you answer that, Junior. <laughs> I'm not getting mixed up with any of Uncle Baxter's pals. I'm going to get rid of this guy right away. All right, all right, but don't be rude to the man. Not me. Folks, it is an honor and a privilege to present my dearest crony, Jasper Angle. How do you do, Mr. Angle? Hello, Mr. Angle. Hello, Mr. Angle. Goodbye, Mr. Angle. <laughs> I beg your pardon, sir. Did you say goodbye? Yes. I am undesirable of taking up any more of your valuable time. 
Oh, oh, no, no, Mr. Riley, my time isn't valuable. Well, then I certainly don't want any of it. <laughs> Baxter, I think I'll be going. Oh, no, wait a minute, Chance. Uh, uh, Mr. Wrangle, my husband is just trying to say he doesn't want to take advantage of you. Mm, he won't. Now, <laughs> dear, we might as well listen to Mr. Wrangle's ideas since he's gone to the trouble of coming over. Well, I'll listen, but with a closed mind. Oh, fine. Now then, Mr. Riley, have a good cigar. And may I see the plans for your edifice? Yeah, but it's not an edifice. It's just a house, that's all. If it's cozy and nice looking, we're going to be very happy in it. Nice looking? We're taking it from your uncle. When Wrangle builds a house, nobody can touch it. Why? Will it fall down? <laughs> Isn't that little uh, boy up rather late? Now, Junior, dear, go to bed. Uh, you too, Eloise. Good night. Good night, dear. Okay. If you get stuck on the building, Mr. Wrangle, I've got an erector set. <laughs> My old boy was getting like that till I made him stop listening to Red Skelton. <laughs> now then, uh, tell me more about this little dream home. I'd love to know exactly what my potential client has in mind. Say, uh, this isn't a bad cigar. Yeah, and I've got several hundred boxes of them at home. Well, say, I may let you build this house after all, Mr. Wrangle. Well, that's very flattering, sir, but I don't see how I can squeeze your house in. I'm awfully busy these days. I came over as a favor to Baxter. Oh, really? That's the truth, folks. Jasper's the only good builder in town that hasn't been drafted. I'm 4F. I got caught in a cement mixer. <laughs> and besides, Jasper builds very fast. Oh. Oh, and that's important to us, Mr. Wrangle. We've got to move by Saturday. Well, I can't build that fast. <laughs> well, look, Mr. Wrangle, we live in a hotel till you finish the house. You ain't going to let us down now, Mr. Wrangle. You can't, you know. You, you... Well, I don't know. For my sake, Jasper. Well, all right, I'll do it. Oh, gee, thanks. Here, sit down here. Now, 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 here's the plans. How do you like them? Great! Perfect! So it didn't take you very long to study it. <laughs> you must know your business. Exactly. I wouldn't change one detail. Now then, what did you figure on spending? Six thousand. That's absolute cost. Six thousand will be ample, I'm sure. See, I told you, Mom. And we want the outside to be colonial. Colonial? Yeah, colonial. <laughs> You're going to look fine in a white wig. <laughs> <laughs> now let's see the downstairs again. Uh-huh. Say, I like this closet. Closet? That's the living room. <laughs> but this living room is only 11 by 9. I see you in the living room 22 by 18. We must be visiting. <laughs> we'll make the living room a bit larger. Uh, uh, Mr. Wrangle, I don't like to intrude, but if we add any space, doesn't that raise the cost? No, we'll cut down somewhere else. Uh, maybe we can lower the ceiling. That's it. <laughs> And that will give us enough margin to put in a swimming pool. Well, the children would love a pool, but can you do that on $6,000? Mm, we can try, my dear lady. <laughs> this is an ex ex exceptional case. You're Baxter's family, and I don't expect to make one cent of profit on your house. I get it. You just like to stick your hands in a wet cement. <laughs> <laughs> Touche, Mr. Riley, touche. Yeah. <laughs> I see the plans call for six rooms. Yeah, yeah. Three bedrooms, a living room, kitchen, and a dining room. Well, we'll add a rumpus room right here. Now, wait a minute. Oh, Wrangle is right. Riley, you work very hard all day. You deserve some relaxation. Besides, the rumpus room can be used as a guest room, if you need it. <laughs> Something tells me we're going to need it. Baxter, mark down the rumpus room leading off the gymnasium. Gymnasium? And there'll be a nice view from your gym, Mr. Riley. You'll be able to see your tennis court. My tennis court? Oh, Riley, it's how wonderful. Yes, sir. When Randall builds them, it thrills them. I can see you now, Mr. R. You wake in the morning, three sets of tennis on your court, a cool, refreshing swim in your pool, a workout in your gym, breakfast in your magnificent garden. And then I bum a ride to the plant. <laughs> <laughs> now, the minute you get your priority, we'll break ground. Mrs. Riley, you can well be proud of your husband. This is the smartest $13,000 he ever spent. $13,000? Well, uh, that is $13,000 for anyone else. But for Baxter's sake, I'll 
Whistle it down to 12-5. Of course, you'll only have two rooms. 12-5? I told you I want a six-room house for $6,000. Sure, but you've got expensive taste. You want swimming pools. You want tennis courts. Who oh, wants swimming pools and tennis courts? All I want is those players back. I never sent for you in the first place. No, no, no. Keep calm, Riley. I'll go back to get this guy out of here and get him to take you with him. Now, Riley, there's no use losing your head. Now, folks, if it's a $6,000 house you want, I can easily do that. You'll beat it. We'll live in a street before you build a house first. I'll get a house with six rooms. Three bedrooms, a living room, kitchen, and a dining room. And no guest room. You hear that, Uncle Baxter? No guest room. Come along, Jasper, and forgive my vehement nephew. Oh, Riley, you ought to be ashamed yelling like that. How do you like that phony builder? If we listen to him, we'd be in hock all our life. Riley, Riley, what are you doing at that window? Hey, Riley, and another thing. This is the worst cigar I ever smoked. <laughs> Demands for passenger service on railroads and buses will reach new all-time peaks during the late spring, summer, and autumn. If people travel as usual, reserved accommodations may be sold out in advance to persons whose trips are not essential. In such cases, no accommodations are left for servicemen trying to get home on furlough, or for businessmen who have been unable to make plans in advance and are suddenly called to other cities on war matters. Reduction of unnecessary civilian travel is therefore essential. If space is to be assured for members of the armed forces and war production engineers and executives, let us do our part. Life of Riley next week at the same time. William Bendix as Riley appears by arrangement with Hal Roach Studios. The Life of Riley is written by Irvin Brecker and directed by Don Bernard. This is Carlton Cadell speaking. This is the National Broadcasting Company. (laughs) 